Environmental and welcome to a quick video going over how to graph data and do some basic computations. So for next week, you're going to be analyzing your data using mathematical skills in Google Sheets to analyze to the extent at which our game showed different concepts. Um, I'm going to go over each of these right now and hopefully have you then be able to replicate this. And again, if you have questions, feel free to shoot me an email or come see me in Flex. So when we look at our data, we have five sheets where I have already sorted the data based on the games in which we changed grass regrowth, and then sheep energy, wolf energy, sheep reproduction, and wolf reproduction. One of the main ways in which we're going to be able to look at our data is making scatter plots. So you're always going to want to take the variable that you want to graph as your independent variable, your x variable, and paste it next to your grass data and your da -da -da -da, sheep data and your wolf data. And that's just going to allow you to easily graph data. Now, whoops, I put that in the wrong place. So I've already done that. And this is how you make a scatter plot. You highlight one column, you highlight another column, you press insert, you press chart, and boom. Now, this is showing us a line graph. So a couple things have to happen. If you make a graph and it is something that's not a scatter plot, double click, go over to setup, press this or scroll down to make a scatter plot. Notice we have two series. I need to get rid of grass regrowth, press remove, and add grass regrowth as my X variable. Perfect. I'm then going to go over here, press customize, press series. I'm going to add a trend line. I'm going to show R squared. It's 0.35. Right now, this is a linear trend line. This is not linear. I'm going to try exponential. Doesn't really make anything better. Polynomial. There we go. So this is our trend line, which is 8.81. A trend line is showing you the strength of the correlation between x and y based on the type of trend line that we've picked. And it appears that as you progressively make grass grow back slower, there are more peaks to a certain point, and then they start to slow down. So this is going to be telling us the number of times that grass peaked. Great. I can also graph more than one y variable on a scatter plot. So I'm going to highlight grass regrowth, press I, press J. Right now I'm holding down command when I click these letters. You could do control if you're using a PC. I'm going to press insert. I'm going to press chart. Again, get rid of grass regrowth on the series, add x-axis, grass regrowth, go over to setup, make this a scatter plot, and then I need to go over to series, add trend lines, show our squared. 0.13 and 0.276 aren't great, so I'm just going to try exponential, doesn't really do anything, logarithmic, that's a little bit better, let's try polynomial, that's the best. And again, it's showing us that there seems to be, as we make grass grow slower, there tends to be a reduction in the oscillation. So it's growing back slightly faster, but the peaks are really dropping quite low. So that's how you make scatter plots. Now, some of the analysis that you can do for this work is discussing the distribution and replicates of the data set, whether it's skewed or even accurate and precise. I'm going to do that right now. So when I look at the scatter plot, zoom in, it does appear as if my data tends to be a little bit skewed in the 40 to 75 data set. I have a few high grass regrowth rates and I have a few low grass regrowth rates, but there's a lot of data centered in the middle. And then when I'm talking about the accuracy of my data, notice I have one, two, three data sets all at 10. There's a huge imprecision here. Same thing with here, one, two, three, huge imprecision at 15. And then when I compare 20 to 25, there's also quite a bit of gap in here. So I'm seeing some data that does not appear to be that precise. When I look at the oscillation data, it appears as if there's a far greater precision to the replicates in terms of their clumping.
notice here at 10, they're all really good. But also a lot of the red dots are quite close to the trend line. One thing I can do if I want to see both variables on different axes in my game is, or my chart is I'm gonna go to customize. I'm gonna press series. I'm gonna pick grass oscillation and I'm gonna scroll down and add a right axis, boom. And that usually helps the data be a little bit more uh, uncompressed. So this is my Y axis on the left for peaks and this is my Y axis on the right for oscillations. Terrific. You're also going to be able to, if you choose, to do some computations. So the first one that's really easy is um, average. And how you do this is you press equals, you press average, and you then do left parenthesis and highlight all the data. Press right parenthesis, boom. The average peaks was 6.9. So when I look at this equation, these parentheses just mean highlight the data you want to find the average for. I can also find the range. To do that, I'm going to press equals, type in max, highlight the data, press minus, do min, and then highlight the data again. So my range is 14. I can do standard deviation, which is going to tell me how precise my data set is. Left parenthesis, highlight all the data, right parenthesis, boom, 3.6. I also can do a t-test if I want to compare two groups of data. To do that, I'm going to do equals t-test. I'm going to do left parenthesis. I'm going to highlight a group of data. So I'm going to highlight right now the number of peaks for all of the graphs below, uh, let's say, 25, because that's representing graphs that grew back faster than the 30. So I'm going to highlight all of that data. I'm then going to do a comma, and then highlight all the data in the other group. And then I'm going to do a comma, and I'm going to press 2, because I want to be looking at both sides of the distribution. And then I'm going to do a comma 3, because I'm comparing two groups with different sizes, which, is meaning, which means that the data is heteronormative. Um, that means that the variance in the two groups is likely going to be different. I do right parenthesis. So again, I've selected my first group of data, my second group of data. Do a two because I'm comparing both sides, and a three because the two groups are different. Press enter. And this is telling me how different the two groups are in terms of a t-test. And that looks astoundingly stellar. Um, that basically means that the two data sets are wickedly different, um, which sort of is backed up by the data when I look at the data between low and high. There's a very, very, very small chance that my data sets are similar. So those are the four computations that you can do. We've talked about how to make scatter plots and look at R squared. We've also, you can also cite ranges of data points for X and Y to establish groups. I think we just did that by talking about um, grass regrowth rate below and above the constant value of 30. So your three questions are, when you plot data or do computations, does the amount of energy change the ecosystem? Does the efficiency of energy transformations change the ecosystem? And does the reproduction rate of populations transform or change the ecosystems? Three short paragraphs where you should be citing data and computations. I do want you to put your Google Sheet link in here. You are more than welcome to copy and paste. Let's just do this. Graphs into your document that you think are useful. Paste link to spreadsheet. But these should be short, quick questions. Um, this is not going to be due until Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So on Tuesday, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Enjoy, and thanks for watching.